Hi, welcome to Sail Juice. On the show today with me is a young man who's, who's had himself quite an eventful last couple of weeks uh, on accomplishments uh, in the DN Ice Boat. Uh, in the span of, I believe it was just over two weeks, he uh, competed in the DN Worlds, which was in Sweden, which he came third. Uh, followed that up with a 13th at the DN Europeans. Headed over to Finland, won the Finnish Nationals in, in Finland, and then uh, uh, on his way over to Estonia, where he won the DN Youth Worlds, and followed that up with another win at the DN Europeans. So quite a, quite a, a feat you had going there. So yeah, it was going all, good. <laughs> first of all, some introductions. I'm Mike Madge. I'm coming to you from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Uh, and with me here is Oscar Svensson. Yep. And, uh, so first of all, uh, where are you coming to us from here today, Oscar? Today I'm in uh, New Shopping in uh, in Sweden, uh, but I live in Strängnäs, a little okay. town uh, one hour west from uh, Stockholm. And I, I know you look like you're 13, but how old are you? <laughs> I'm 18. <laughs> 18, yeah. That was, that was just a joke. So uh, so let, let's start us off with, with the worlds. Like, I mean, obviously that's a premier event when it comes to DNs. Uh, let's talk about your preparation going into the world. What, what sort, how much ice time training did you get prior to the worlds? We had a really good year in Sweden. We've been sailing basically since December, the beginning of December and, uh, sailing all, all the time. Basically, as soon as I, I could, I was sailing, I was sailing, uh, I got time off from school sometimes to sail and I was just really focusing on trying to get a lot of time on the ice and also put in time to to fix my equipment, especially runners and uh, yeah, getting everything dialed in. Now, did you have some training partners there? I understand you, you have a coach also? Yep, I have my coach, uh, Thomas Lindgren, who's been helping me just an enormous amount. Uh, he's uh, always, uh, you can always call him and ask if you're gonna sharpen your runners, what you're gonna, what he wants you to do and uh, how to get a good setup uh, of spread of runners. And uh, I have my sparring partner, partner uh, Gustav Lindén, who's, uh, I think he was third in the youth Euro worlds and second in youth European. So really good caliber guy. And we can always tune together and uh, everything you do really show shows if you're going faster or slower, which is really, really helpful. Sadly, he wasn't with me for, for Gold Cup, but. So, I mean, I mean. As most people know, ice boating, ice boating takes up a lot of time. You got to be pretty flexible, pretty nomadic. So you, you're a young guy. So what do you what do you do, and how do you find the the time to do that? Well, uh, this year my schedule in school has been really favorable for ice sailing. I've had a lot of time uh, time off basically, and I had my whole winter break, which I could just sail. Basically, so yeah, I've been lucky to have a lot of time for sailing, but uh, then uh, using the weekends, obviously, uh, taking uh, time off on Fridays, usually uh, a lot of, yeah, just uh, having nice school that lets me go out and sail. Uh, I, I know a lot of people in the, the head of the school basically sail and I am, so they're pretty, pretty happy with me going. Now we talked about your sailing preparation. What about your physical preparation? Did you uh, complement that with some physical training also? I yeah, I really like lifting weights. So I did that a lot during summer. Got pretty strong and uh, got some weight on me too, just to be able to hold the boat down because I've been really, really light previous years. So it helped me to be a little bit heavier and also run faster. I I think I'm definitely one of the fastest runners in the starts. So uh, the, I'm going to turn our attention to, to the world's event. So you, uh, you showed up, uh, I think it was originally scheduled for Poland, wasn't it, the event? Yep, and then and, changed pretty much last minute. Yeah, so you had to head off to Sweden. But you, did you go into the event feeling pretty confident with all the training you've had? or? Yeah, I was testing on what was it on... Friday, I think it was, uh, testing with, uh, yeah, I think it was Friday. No, I came to the ice on Friday and then on, 
what is it Saturday I was sailing with uh, Lucas and uh, Adam uh, and I felt I had really good speed I was uh, keeping up with them and sometimes sailing faster so I felt pretty confident that I would would be going fast and then uh, yeah basically talking with Lucas about his setup and trying to tune with him to really see because he's obviously was the reigning champion so yeah. Uh, yeah just uh, for people that don't know Lucas you're talking Lucas Sakrevsky yeah. Sak- Sakrevsky yeah okay so so I, I had the opportunity uh, through internet to watch the first race in Sweden it looked like good ice with uh, a little bit of snow cover it looked like almost a tale of two races like I, I saw uh, Hammer it there got off and pretty much did a ham, uh, horizon job on everybody the first race. And then it looked like the group you were in just seemed to stay in, in the wind. And, and a lot of boats were pushing and uh, uh, obviously some boats got barded. So what was your what was your recollection of that first race? Well, I think it was really uh, there was wind on one side and there wasn't wind on the other side. So I. I had Rasmus Malin, the previous junior, junior world champion, uh, to windward of me. And then to leeward, I had uh, Hamrak. And then next to him was Lukas Sakrevski. So obviously, there was really high caliber guys all, way, all standing, going to the left really, really far out. And there was a big advantage standing there. So I went out with uh, me and Lukas, basically grabbed the start, went out. A bit too far to the left. We got oversailed, had to go really low angle. Hamrak tacked a little bit earlier, so he came up. Uh, but I stayed with him, uh, Hamrak, really for a long time. And then I I made a stupid mistake on the first downwind, I think. First or second downwind. I was leading the race uh, and just, uh, you know... Uh, my fr- second gold cup, first time leading. I was really stressed, so making stupid mistakes. Uh, so I lost him there, and but I felt I had the good speed. And yeah, I, w- I was bummed out after that race. I wanted to win that one because I felt I had the speed. Uh, but yeah, that's sometimes that happens. And then I, I didn't do that the next time I, I was leading. So, so going back to the race, like what, what mistakes did, did you did you make a mental note of the mistakes you made or? Yeah, I I was we jibed in to the course. We jibed a little bit too early. Uh, I jibed first, and he jibed after me. So basically, uh, if this is him and this is me, I was basically like this, and we jibed, and then I saw the saw the mark. Started going towards that, going lower to the wind. And I basically lost all my speed. So I had to go up and go basically half wind for a while. And that lost me. I lost him and then, uh, you know, had to start over. All right. So, I mean, still, so you ended up second in that first race then. So a really, really good start. And then you get snowed out. So, uh off, uh, off to which is an unusual in an ice boating event, but you had to travel what about five, six hours to a, a new uh, location in Norway. Yep, so traveling to Norway, we have a really nice ice scout in Sweden, uh, Didrik, who uh, just looked at sac- satellite pictures for ice, found something in Norway, and he said, I'm heading over there to go look. It was just amazing ice, and apparently, there's almost never snow there. So amazing finding that place. And uh, yeah, we went over there and uh, got uh, got the regatta in. So, I mean, but you had to wait a day, right? I mean, the, then the first day, it kind of looked like your ice was almost disappearing. You ended up with that shell ice, we call it here. I think double ice, you guys call it. You ended up with that, didn't you? So, well, I mean, what... Uh, how did you handle the the lay time? Like, obviously, you're off to a good start. You're feeling good. What sort of mental prep? You know, how did you prepare yourself mentally to race again? I don't exactly remember what, what I was doing. I was just sort of, I was trying to think of sailing, but not think of uh, what I did in that race. So I was 
watching a lot of YouTube videos of sailing. Uh, we have Lukas Sakchevsky has a really, really good YouTube channel, a lot of nice videos, your, your videos, and uh, Tom Mikhsachevsky's videos. So a lot of just uh, videos of ice sailing, trying to visualize uh, what I'm going to do and what's going to happen. So, so, I mean, a lot of the top sailors I talk to, they, they, they talk about this visualization. So that, that's a big part of your training also. Yeah. When you can't sail, you got to think sailing instead, I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you finally got the races in, it was a one day event to finish the worlds. I think you guys had four races in that one day. Uh, the conditions looked really well and, and you continued, you know, your success, you, 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 I believe you were leading up into the last race, right? Yeah, I was leading with, I think, was two points. And then uh, uh, the wind picked up a lot. So I should have changed the sail. But it was pretty hectic before the start. We didn't, we, we didn't know if the race was going to happen or if, if it wasn't going to happen because the wind was shifting a lot. And I was just, uh, me and my coach, uh, my coach had to go away. So I was basically sitting by my own waiting for the start and I didn't know should I change the sail should I so and I didn't I, I hesitated and didn't change it so yeah having the deeper sail I just didn't have the shop speed I needed which was a bummer but can't win the first time no no but I mean that I, I'm trying to I was trying to do a little more research but it's some of it's hard to find I was trying to think uh, who's I mean, the youngest guy to podium at a, at a DN Worlds. Uh, I would have to think you're pretty close to the youngest. Yep, it's uh, me and uh, Michael Bushinsky who were 18. Is that right? Same. Did you, did and you then uh, the next about, one is Lucas, second place uh, when he was 21. Wow. Yeah, because usually, I mean, we'll show pictures later of the rest of the podium there and you know, a young guy doing that well is incredible. So, so you're happy with that. They hold the DN Europeans. You, you, again, you have a pretty respect. I mean, they're respectable. 13th. Uh, what are your recollections of the Europeans right after that? I was pretty, pretty tired after the world. So I was uh, not sailing like I should sail. Basically, I we had quite strong breeze and hard ice. Uh, which so really really fast conditions so i would have needed a flatter sail than i had because uh, the top guys were just using a basically a completely flat sail in those conditions and then i had just the wrong runners on so i wasn't i wasn't able to sail the way i should and i left my sharper runners in uh, by in my car so um i mean it's not unusual that you see like a big discrepancy between a world's and the Europeans, much like when we have the world's and North Americans here. And I remember talking to Carl Jablonski about that. And he says, you know, winning the world's is, is it, it takes a toll mentally, physically, you know, you're outside, it's cold and it's just really hard to regroup again. Is that yep. what you found? Yeah, I was just super tired, bummed out. I was, yeah, I was really, really sad after, uh, yeah, just uh, making mistake in the last race and not winning it. So I, yeah, I was really, really tired, sad, and just uh, yeah, I was pretty down right there. But obviously, regroup because you you found yourself. What was it? The weekend later, you were in Finland at the Finnish Nationals. Yep. And and that obviously went well for you. Won that. Yep. Um, that felt really good because uh, Hamlak was there too. So sailing against him again. Having a, a revenge, basically, to put it. <laughs> and then the, the I guess the big event on your calendar, you then you moved all the way to Estonia, and uh, that's where the DN uh, Youth Worlds were. Which uh, it, it sounded like it was a two day event. Um, your scores were amazingly consistent, but I mean the top three were were very close to to choose between. Yep. Yeah, Erasmus, obviously. Erasmus Malin, obviously a five-time champion, I think. So he's really always going to be there. And he's uh, he had some trouble, you know, some bad races. And I managed to stay, always stay in the top four, so was consistent. So so once you got off to a good start at the, the DN Youth Worlds, uh, 
I mean, much like you did at the at the senior worlds, I guess they call it. it, it are you playing a, a bit of a numbers game where you 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 know who your competition? Is? I mean, probably easier at the youth worlds because it was less votes. So were you kind of playing a numbers game like you you were keeping an eye on the top two other guys? Yeah, it was basically after the first day, I knew that it was going to be between me and Rasmus. Uh, so, yeah, I was kind of playing it safe. I started on the wrong side, uh, both races for for the last day. So, but I managed to get up to the top mark in second place, both racers. So I was always in the top and I felt I'm just going to play it safe because I knew if I'm, if I'm second in both races, I'm winning. So... I just played it safe, followed Rasmus, and just tried to finish it up. Finish it up. Don't do anything stupid, basically. So when you say you started on the wrong side, I mean obviously I, I think people that have watched enough of our DN shows recognize how a DN race starts, and it's predetermined by your previous finish whether you go left or right. Um, and and usually having sailed the previous race, you have a good indi- good idea of which side is is working so when you get off on on the side that you're not happy with what what are your strategies there what are you thinking that depends on why it's the wrong side because if uh, sometimes it's just that the the line is shifted so you're standing further down or something uh, and sometimes it's just uh, bad eyes or more wind on the other side and whatever so but this time it was basically the wind was shifting and every time it was shifting it was shifting to the right so I knew that if I'm going to attack, I'm going to get headed when I'm attacking. So I was always trying to, to make sure that I didn't attack when, when I was going high. I would try to attack when I was getting headed for starboard. So I was getting higher when I attacked. So yeah, the, it was basically the wind shifts that made it so that the left side was unfavorable. And we really, we really, really saw that on Europeans because that started right after. And then I got off to a really good start. I won the first three racers or something with a big margin because I was starting on the right side. So so when you did start off on the left and you knew the right was favored, are, are you looking to, to get over there as soon as possible? That depends. Uh, I mean, I was trying to attack when it was favorable to attack, basically, because because of the shifts, I wanted to attack when I I was getting headed for headed for starboard, so I can attack over to port and have a good angle. Because I didn't want to basically sail and get headed all all the time. Yeah. I wanted to sail good angles. So, so, yeah, I was so the, looking sorry, for the, shifts. Yeah, the wind was oscillating then. It wasn't just yeah. a. a a persistent shift over to the right the whole race. Yeah, I was oscillating back and forth. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I, now, you weren't the, the first Sweden to win the DN Youth Worlds. Uh, uh, I believe uh, Eddie uh, Clements, it was, yep. who, who won it. So, what what sort of an influence has he been on your sailing? Uh, re- really, really big one, actually. Uh, the year I started uh, sailing... Uh, was the year he won his first worlds so obviously like seeing him uh always always being at the top was just super good in- inspiration and also uh you know just how he changes runners all the time like before the races he would change runners over and over and over and always testing trying to find the best ones and that really showed me what you're gonna have to do to win and well, obviously, like having some well, someone to look up to, because like I didn't really see a lot of people that were good at sailing back then, because the juniors were pretty separated from the seniors. Uh, so the only really fast guy I saw was was him, and it was yeah, great inspiration. Uh, now, question: Like usually, you think of ice boating, you kind of accumulate equipment as you you get older like you, you see some of the older guys you know they they got their 20 sets of uh, runners or whatever you know the average guy kind of gets into it gets his you know one set of runners and then maybe the next year for christmas get, 
Uh, so what sort of uh, inventory do you have in terms of skates and sales? In terms of skates, I have uh, five sets of 100-degree uh, ra ra uh, insert runners. And then I have a pair of 95-degree insert runners and one pair of 90-degree insert runners. Then I have a set of thin tees. And then I have a set of uh, thick insert runners that I use instead of thick tees. And then I have one set of plates. And I think that's it. Now, there was some discussion I, I saw on Thomas, Thomas's, uh, and I don't even want to pronounce his last name because I'll make a mess of it. His <laughs> website, he was talking about, he was studying uh, Robert, Gra I believe it was Robert Gratz Gratzky that won the, the, the Worlds. And, and he decided uh, uh, for the their, I think they just had the, uh, which uh, uh, event did they just have that he was going to that he, he found out that the crown on his rudder needed adjusting to, to match the speed of Gratsky. Is that something you play with also your crowns of your runners or are they all kind of the same? Uh, no, I have really different crowns of runners. Uh, all of my 100 degree runners are a, or in a span of what's it, what is it in inches from 24 inches down to. Uh, you can go centimeters. Centimeters is good. Uh, 60 down to 35. Uh, so a really wide span of runners to always have uh, something that's, it's not going to be perfect since I have uh, quite big jumps between them, but they're, they're going to cover most uh, or all basically conditions. So you would go with a shorter crown runner when there's lighter wind and slower conditions, and then a longer runner when there's more wind and faster conditions. To put it simple. And and one of my uh, one of my friends was actually over in Europe, and one of the things he noticed over there, which is a little bit contradictory, but maybe not so much in North America, is he said very few people build their own boats there. Like what what uh, what boat and uh, hull and mass are you running? I have a Lux hull and plank. Uh, Swedish guy from a city close to me. They he built basically some of the nicest boats in the world. They're they're really nice, and the planks are probably the best in the world. I would say. Uh, Karol Jablonski uses them, and yeah, they're really good. And then mass, they have a Hamrak, Hamrak fifty. And Sales, I use uh, one one D sale and one Phoebe sale. So the you got a, a one fuller sale and one platter sale then. Yeah, one power gold and then a clear ice from Bebe. So obviously, I mean, it takes a lot of it must take a lot of tuning. I mean, just to to figure out what works in what conditions, or is it is it still a bit of a guessing game? Or are you pretty confident? That when you see the ice and the wind conditions, that you're pretty confident that you're on your setup. You always have to test. You you can't uh, trim in in the harbor. You have to test all the time because you don't. You can't know, especially in terms of runners. You could you could be thinking that one several set of runners is going to be fast, and then a complete the other different set of runners is faster. So you you always have to test, but you. You basically have some idea of uh, just somewhere to start, and then you go from there. So, so I want to go backwards here a bit. I mean, we didn't really address the fact that when you actually, when did you get into ice boating? At what age, and and who introduced you to it? I think it was eight years old when I started sailing ice opties. Uh, it was my just summer sailing coach who was starting to sail DNs, so he was like. You should start sailing ice optics too. So I, I tried it out, found it really, really fun with the speed, and I just fell in love with it right away. And then, uh, yeah, kept on going until I was 15, I think. I started sailing DN. And and who were your mentors back then? Who did you like usually as a, you know, you need a group that you call up and scout ice and, and somebody to sail with who, who, what sort of, did you have some older mentors that were helping you out as you went through that or? 
back then it was uh, a guy called C- Simon Sederholm, uh, who was just uh, my summer sailing coach. And uh, I went where he went, basically. I didn't have any contacts with other people. I had my my friends who were also sailing uh, Philip Lindahl I sailed out with. So it was basically just us three going wherever there was ice. And, and just looking at some of the pictures, and you mentioned it earlier, so one of your strengths, obviously, is it, it looks like much like you see Matt Struble here in North America. You're, you're a fast runner, so that obviously is a big advantage. You, you usually get good starts. Yep. Yep. They're running against the Polish guys. It's always difficult but because <laughs> they're really, really fast. But I usually have some edge in the starts. And, and now, I mean, so obviously that's one place where you have an advantage. Is there areas that you still think you need to work on? Like what areas do you think need improvement? I definitely think I need to work on uh, faster conditions. So clear eyes and just a strong breeze. Cause I'm, I think I'm, I'm fast. I'm definitely fast. Finnish championship were in those conditions, but. I think I still need some tuning to get get a further edge in those conditions. Um, and then, I mean, I don't really know where my weaknesses are in terms of like that. I, I usually can tune my way out of, of those situations. But last day of Europeans, I was really stressed out. I was having trouble with finding the trim. But you usually find it for sooner or later. Uh, but I st- think my strengths are in a s- lighter breeze and just sticking conditions where, yeah, it's basically difficult for most people to sail that I'm quite fast. And, and what, what, what weight are you sailing at? Uh, I don't know my weight at sailing, but uh, I weigh just around uh, 76, 78 kilos. Okay. So and, and times two. So just like if for younger sailors coming up, like yourself, still. But I mean, what, what do you think? It's uh, what would you attribute your early success? Is it do you think you you got some natural talent, or is it talent combined with hard work, or has it been a lot of hard work? I think probably some talent. I don't know, uh, but definitely a lot of help from my coach Thomas. You know, finding the, the right equipment, tuning that equipment, how I should tune it, how I should, everything with the equipment he's helped me with. And then also when I'm out on the ice, he helps me with the trimming in the boat. So really, really helpful to he- get a head start, basically, because he's got so much experience and he's basically just pushing it into me. And that's really, really helpful. And and have you been over to North America for any events yet or? I was there in 2017. Uh, I was going to sail ice up this there, actually. Uh, but the regatta didn't go in. So, But I was uh, yeah, hanging, hanging out with Deb and, uh, and Ron Rostan. Yep. That was, that was the event in Madison, I believe, right? Where we had one day yep. and, yeah, and then we had, uh, yeah, I think Jablonski won that event. Yeah. Um, so what other, uh, do you complement your winters? Cause so, so your winter season is usually what December till, uh, it's, uh, December to March usually, but sometimes you don't really get a lot of sailing in December. It's usually start starting li- a little bit later, it's usually like January. Uh, but this year was really favorable. Now, so you also complement that you you talked about you you do soft water sailing. What what do you what do you mainly con? So what classes do you concentrate on there? I mostly sail some sports boats, so like uh, J seventy, uh, Far East twenty eight, and Melgus twenty four. Uh, so just uh, just fast, faster boats, performance. Now, are you crewing on those or helming them? Usually crewing. Uh, Mostly trimming uh, the the Jenniker, or what do you call it? Asymmetric. Asymmetric. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so the, the question leads me to a lot of the. You see, a lot of really good ice boaters have gravitated either from catamaran or high performance thing, moth catamarans. Uh, any thoughts of those uh, sailing? Some of those. I haven't sailed anything of 
any one of those, but uh, I would really love to, but sadly they're just a bit too expensive right now for me. Uh, but I would, I would definitely love to sail though. They look amazing. And I understand you have some other hobbies also. Uh, you kind of remind me of another pretty good sailor named Glenn Ashby. I think you've heard of Glenn. Uh, he, he's, a, you never heard of Glenn Ashby. Oh, he, he, oh. he's America's cup sailor there and, uh, a cap oh. world champion. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. But, okay. but, but he like, he like you is, uh, is addicted to motocross and BMX. Is, is that on your, uh, list of things you like to do? Yeah. I've been say, uh, riding a lot of the enduro it's called, uh, just, uh, it's basically mountain biking. And I have a S- Swedish championship third place in that. So I've been quite successful. I had really bad year last year, though. But yeah, I've been riding a lot of bikes and motocross before that. So you obviously like the speed aspect of that. Yep. <laughs> Good for you. Um, uh, I was told to ask by Deb there. She says apparently you have an uh, a, a affection for American muscle cars also. Yeah, I loved American mascots when I was a bit younger, uh, yeah. especially the the Camaros. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. Fi- I just want to finish the interview. I want. I got a few pictures of you from the events, and I want to just ask you a few things about some of them, and maybe you can talk about some of this. Is obviously the presentation at the the DN Worlds uh, that you off on the right there. You're looking pretty fit. <laughs> um uh who is who so the winners up on that front row from left to right who are we looking at here so i'm to the right at the front and then in the middle it's uh robert Grasek, uh from poland he's the winner and yeah p31 is his number he's a moth sailor in the sum, summer i think it was 12th at world so really good sailor at that and then we have to the left of the front is Peter Hamrick, who was second. Yeah. And up to the left uh, at top is uh, Lukas Sakshevsky, uh, previous world champion. And, and, and I believe he won the Europeans, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. And his brother, wasn't his brother second? Second in Europeans, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas, Tomek. We got, I think, a couple pictures of you. That this you're looking, you're looking pretty relaxed here. Is that? Uh, is, this is obviously in between races. Uh, do you, Do you remember this photo at all, or where it was from? Yeah, I remember. I uh, that was uh, the first race in Norway before that one because we were waiting for wind for quite a long time, and there was a lot of people standing around. Uh, my boat and I was basically trying to to just focus on myself are, are, you, usually, are you usually pretty relaxed between races or <sighs> that usually depends but I'm uh, I'm trying to stay relaxed but I'm I have a hard time staying, staying relaxed inside but I, I usually look pretty almost angry I know <laughs> Yeah, that's not a bad thing too when it comes to sailing. You gotta have a little aggression to you too. <laughs> Here's a pretty nice shot of you uh ripping it up here. Yeah, that's the, the finish of the first race. So this was the first race at the worlds in the in the Europeans. Yep. Or or sorry, at the DN Worlds in uh in in this was in when you were still in Sweden. Yep. In, and down uh, downwind finish. Yeah, it looks looks yep. Looking good in that picture there. Looking great. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit. Uh, I'm looking at your position in the, in this photo here, and I was looking at it, and you're you're really uh, you look like I don't know how tall you are. You look like a fairly tall guy, but you're quite scrunched forward in the boat. Are, are you going downwind here, or do you remember? Is that kind of a downwind, or what's the thinking of getting that far forward in the boat? This is, I think it's right before rounding down, uh, but it was quite light breeze and I wanted to have a light uh, windward runner to really feel the boat because I was a bit, I was trying to almost pinch up to the mark. So trying to get some height from that feeling the boat where 
where it is. So, so if, got, you're, if you're sliding forward, it's going to hike a bit more and you can get a little bit more feel. Another good picture of you is, uh, would you consider your setup uh, a softer, medium, or a little stiffer setup that you run with? I definitely think I'm, a, I'm on a bit stiffer setup, usually. And what do you think the advantages of a stiffer setup on your boat is? It's going to help you find where the angles are a lot more. It's going to push you up upwind and it's going to push you downwind. So you're usually sailing. You're usually going to get help to sail the right angles because if the boat is too soft, you you can sail any way you want. And then you have to look yourself for the angles. But if you have a stiffer boat, it's going to help you upwind. Now, does that require a little bit more sheeting? Like you see soft setups, they almost go block to block and and just, you know, they don't really change their sheeting. So do you, do you require a little more sheeting with a stiffer setup? You definitely require to sheet a bit more and uh, be a bit more working with the body balance to try and not get too high hikes. So that's sliding forward and aft in the boat to do that? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever like... Uh, like we talk a lot about forward and aft movements in in a in a DN. Do you ever uh, use any like side motions, like out and out, back and out, or or even like? A I mean, when you're hiking, you're next to the boom, so you're a little bit to windward, but not not really using that because it just you don't get as much riding moment from just hiking over with your upper body. You gotta go back, back and out. And, and are you pretty uh, uh, conscious of your your uh, your aerodynamics in the boat? Are you pretty conscious of tucking yourself right in and elbows in? And uh, that depends. If I'm leading the race and I'm com, oh sorry, and I'm comfortable, I'm just gonna I'm usually gonna scoot into the boat and just try to focus on speed. Uh, but if I'm not leading big time and uh, there's not high speeds, I'm usually not too conscious about it. So it looks like so you're obviously like with a DN here, you got your, you know, it's important to have your head on a swivel, you know, boats closing fast. So what sort of your attention when you're sailing? Like wh where does your focus go? Like, I mean, how much time would you spend sail? Uh, ice conditions, competitors, are you kind of in a constant rotation where you're observing that? Or uh, In this uh, race, I was actually looking to find someone because I was basically almost the whole upwind ahead. So I was like, where are they? Uh, but usually I'm looking a lot through my windows, uh, especially when I'm on port, because you, you just have to be safe. And But I'm uh, looking a lot of on my... Uh, telltales in the what would you call it the uh, between the top and second baton those telltales I spent a lot of time looking at especially downwind no. uh, so mostly looking at at my sail to try and find the speed one of the things with talk with Matt Struble downwind he, one of the things he pointed out was he he uh he never really sheets block to block downwind. He wants that mass to rotate a little bit. And uh, are you of the same thinking or? Uh, no, I don't think so. I I usually try to when I feel I have the speed, I want to really just get the the sail completely flat to try and really uh, be able to work with the the height going up and down and always trying to work and having the the wind run runner going off the ice and just yeah trying to have good feel and i find i have better feel when i'm uh twisting the boat uh the mast uh more or less uh, so it's more forward and aft basically so uh, you did mention that you felt you had good speed w were you thinking you had good speed with like upwind were you good speed equal height or were you you good speed, a little bit higher than your competition. On the worlds, I definitely think I was sailing a bit uh, lower, but a lot of a lot higher speeds. Uh, a lot of the juniors usually sail pretty upwind, uh, 
uh, don't really get the speed up. So I think uh, at that per- particular race, I was sailing uh, wider angles. But at uh, Worlds, as a uh, gold cup, I was definitely sailing more head to wind than the other fast guys. And in terms of downwind, were you were you trying to sail equal speed but a bit lower or, or higher and or uh, going for a little bit of height and speed on them? That depends on the situation. Usually, when I'm leading, I'm trying to sail uh, more down because usually people just follow. Yeah. Uh, that's just how it is. So, usually, when I'm leading, I'm trying to sail a bit more towards where I'm going. But if I'm trying to hunt someone down, follow, I'm going to go higher angles and more speed. Well, it looks like you're, you're, you're maxed out here. That looks like good mass bend, good plank bend. Yep, that's a pretty pretty high speed. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about this question. Uh, so this, uh, uh, now you could be finishing or you're rounding the lured mark here. You must be, uh, now that I'm, I'm looking finishing. at oh, Okay, because I see the foot coming out there and I'm thinking like, is this a, a new technique for rounding the lured mark? But that's you finishing then, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to go through those series of pictures with you, the great pictures that you said. There you are again, nice and low in the boat, and yeah, that looks great. Nice looking boat. Yeah. <laughs> what is used from a, a sailor in Stockholm? Well, I, I have to say I'm, I'm really impressed. I mean, you know, for your age, I mean, how do you even get around to it? You got your license. You have your driver's license, so you drive. Yeah, I got it this summer, actually. And you you drove to all these events yourself, or? Yeah, basically driving to most of them myself. Uh, to worlds, I had my little brother with me, so I went with my dad. And and how did you find you the, the the older guys are are with you? Are they pretty good with you? Yeah, they're really nice. Really, really nice. They're usually really happy that I'm going faster and faster. And uh, yeah, they're helpful all the time. Well, good for you. Because it's it's great to see some youth injected into the sport. And uh, you obviously had some fantastic results. So I'm very impressed. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again. Thank you. 